Welcome to this second video in the series Word for Writing Academic Papers in English. In this video, I want to discuss three very important aspects for formatting your paper. That is defining fonts, structuring paragraphs, and setting up styles. So in the first video, I demonstrated setting the page format of the document. This included page size, margins, orientation, columns, breaks, line numbers and hyphenation. In this video, I will demonstrate setting up the fonts, formatting the paragraphs and defining and using styles. I believe that these are very important, especially defining and using styles. And this can save you a lot of time when writing your research paper. And particularly will help you enormously and save even more time when you are writing your thesis or dissertation. So, let's look at selecting fonts. I've lost my, here we are, selecting fonts. Okay, now, here we have on the home menu, the font menu. And this has, first of all, what we might call the quick fonts menu and the full fonts menu. I'll demonstrate the quick fonts menu because that's most convenient. In this particular case, I want to set up the standard normal paragraph format. So I highlight this particular paragraph and I go to the fonts and I say, OK, I want to select the particular font. Now there are many, many fonts. Yeah, you could have this funny one here or you could have uh, this one here or... But the one that we want for the journals is Eucrosia UPC. Okay? And so I'm setting the font Eucrosia UPC 14 point. I don't want it to be bold. I don't want it to be italics. So I just don't click on that. The other options for the font, I could, for example, underline everything. If I highlight this again, I can underline it. Don't want to do that. And there's the ability to do subscripting, superscripting, and so on. Now, to show this a little bit more, I'm going to knock down the, the main menu. And this is set up as I have intended and then here are a number of other options that I could select I could strike through the uh, text with a double strike through super and subscript and so on now that menu is reflected up here which one is it again I've lost it. Okay, doesn't matter. I'll go back to here. I'll set the font menu and I will, for example, set everything here as small caps. There we are, small caps. Or maybe I'll set it as all caps in the font size. Perhaps I can set it, if I want to, to um, no, underline or strike through. Particularly of interest, if I come back up here, here I have three authors, and I'll make this black. And the normal way, when you're writing a paper, if you have three authors, is to indicate for each one what their affiliation is. So let's say for the first author I want affiliation number one and for the second author affiliation number two 
and for the third author I'll go with either one. So here I'll say one and I will say that is a superscript. Here I can put a two and I can say that that is a superscript. And the same with here, that also is a superscript. I could, if I want, say it's a subscript, but I don't want to, I want it as a superscript. OK, so here is a very large variety of things that you can do formatting your font. And, of course, the best way to find out everything in that particular menu is to have a look and try for yourself. OK. So that's selecting fonts. Now, formatting paragraphs. Load another document. I don't particularly want that one. I want a different document. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, here we are, journals template. This is the template that I've already formatted and it's much easier for me to use this to demonstrate paragraphs. Let's start at the big paragraph. Okay, this. Now, I want this big paragraph to be justified. That means lined up on the left and lined up on the right. The other options I have here is I could do it on the left or I could line it up on the right. But I want justified. Now I can do this from the quick menu. Okay. Okay, so this paragraph I could set the alignment using the quick menu or I could set it using the full menu. What you do not want to do with English language writing is set it to tie distributed. So that's justified. Now I could indicate I want indentation on the left or indentation on the right but I don't want to do that. I do want to indicate that I want six points before and after each paragraph and I want the paragraph uh, to be one and a half lines of spacing and so it looks like that. But very importantly, I want to set one of these two options or three options. First line says first line indent. So the first line is indented, in this case, by half a centimetre. If I wanted hanging, I'll just demonstrate hanging. There we are. After the first line, the rest of the paragraph hangs off the first line. That's what hanging means. But in this particular case, I just want a first line indent of half a centimetre. So there we are. That's what I want these sorts of paragraphs to look like. Now, if I go back up to here, this, in fact, is a paragraph. It's only a one line paragraph, but it's still a paragraph. To show you this, I'm going to turn on hidden characters. That's what this symbol up here is for. Turns on hidden paragraphs or hidden characters. Here, that symbol indicates a hard paragraph mark, the end of a paragraph. And you can see it there and there and there. Every end of paragraph will have one of these symbols. Now, if I wanted to put this title on two lines, but I still want it to be, be the same paragraph, let's position the cursor there and do an uppercase enter. Hit the uppercase key and the enter key. And that places this symbol, this little arrow, 
left facing arrow and that's just called a line feed. So I now have a paragraph on two lines and I have forced the line feed at that point. But I don't want to do that so we'll back out of that. Okay, so this particular paragraph is defined as being centred, no left and right indent, no white space before it but 12 points of white space after it, nothing special, line spacing single. And I can then go through and I can format each of these other pieces of text as paragraphs. That is how you format a paragraph. Don't use a tab to indent there. Say that you want first line indent. Don't hit enter, 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 enter to push it across so you have an indent. Use the first line indent. I have seen many papers that have a whole variety we have a formatted first line indent, we have a tabbed first line indent, we have a tab with a couple of spaces, we have a number of spaces, forget it. Format your paragraph correctly using the options on this menu. Of course the advanced menu, about the only one you might be really interested in, is if you want a page break to occur before the paragraph. Okay. So, that's how you format paragraphs. Now this is particularly important. Setting up and using styles. I want you to have a look at this. I want you to see that the first line of text is red. It's bold, it's Times New Roman font, and it's italics 28 point. Now obviously that is different to the next line, where this text is not bold, it's not italics, and it is a different font, Ariel, 22 point. And the same can be said for this third line, it's not bold, it's not italics, it's Arial, but it's 18 point. And of course, as you can see, they're different colours. Now we can say about this that each of these pieces of text are different styles. And we set styles in this area of the Word main menu. Okay. Let's check that out. I'm going to close that one. No, I won't. I'll get this one up, which we were dealing with before. Right. Now, using styles, very important. This piece of text here is the title. It is of a particular style, as you can see, format in the font, paragraphing, centered, etc., etc. And I want to refer to that as title font. So I drag down the, the styles menu and I see that there is a style called title. And I want the title for style to be that. And I can have a look at that. Yes, it's 18 point, you go, and it's paragraph. Okay, fine. So there we are. That is title font. Okay. Now, the thing about title font is it is now different to every other style in the paper, but it only appears once. Let's have a look at this one. This is a different style, obviously. It's centred, 
it's much smaller, same, same font, but 14-point font, it's bold. This style appears in a number of places in the document. Abstract, introduction, methods and materials, results. These look like the usual headings that you have in your paper. And so I'm going to designate these heading one style. And to make sure, I will right click here and I will say update heading one to match the selection. I can do a right click on heading one and check it out. The font is Eucrosia UPC bold 14 point. The paragraphing is it's centered, no, no space before and after. It is single. Actually, I do want space before and after, so I'll make that six points. And nothing special from here. Right. Now, two things, two very important things about heading one styles. If I go to view at the navigation panel, this shows me all of the text which is in heading one style. In fact, it also shows what's in heading two style. Okay? So there is the structural layout of your paper based on styles of heading one, heading two, heading three, particularly heading one, heading two, heading three. Okay? And when you do have these particular heading one, heading two, heading three styles, you can come over here and you can hyperlink Let's look at acknowledgements. Ah, this is what acknowledgements looks like. Let's go back to the abstract. Here's, here we are. So there's this hyperlinking in the document. Now that's not terribly exciting for a two-page document. But what would happen if you had a 350-page PhD thesis? And you want to check parts of the 350-page PhD thesis? And you could just jump. Did I do correct acknowledgements? There we are, page 348, acknowledgements. No problem, jump straight to it. And also, although this is not relevant to a journal paper, a very important use of styles, the heading one, heading two, heading three styles, is when you want to insert a table of contents. There we are, table of contents, based on heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four styles. Now every dissertation and thesis requires a table of contents. And I have seen PhD students who have spent hours, hours and hours typing in a table of contents. If they had applied these styles on day one of their thesis writing, they just have a point and click update to their table of contents. So let me just quickly go through that again. These headings are designated Heading 1 style and because they are designated Heading 1 style they will appear in the navigation panel which is here and also you can use them uh, and they are used when you want to insert a table of contents. And as you're writing your thesis or your dissertation, 
Obviously, you're putting new pages in, you're adding to it, you're changing the page number of where particular headings occur. And all you do is you go right-click, update the field, update the entire table, and it does it. Click, 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 rather than eight hours of tedious entering into probably another file for the table of contents. That is one of the major important reasons why you should use styles. Now, let's move through this particular document. Okay, I have set title style, heading one style, normal style. So let's make this normal style just yeah, there we are, yes, it's normal style. Heading one style. This is normal style. Okay, heading one. Ah, here we have a subheading. Now the formatting of the subheading is this particular font, 14, bold. It is in fact half a centimetre from the left as a first line, justified, no we don't need justified, we only need left, okay, and we make that header 2 style, updating the header to header 2 style, this is header 2 style as well, so is this. And now, if we have another look at the navigation, we see these header two style text headings here indented slightly. And of course, that would appear that way in your table of contents. Now, if we look further, ah, references. Now, usually, the references are different to the normal paragraphs in your document. In this particular case, the references are in 14 point Eucrosia UPC. They are justified. There is no space between the lines, no extra space. They are single. And so we're happy with that. This is not a style that is usual. It is not a standard style. So what I've done is I have specified, I have added a new style, which I call references style. And how you add a new style, again, is very simple. That button there, down the bottom. Here we have, I'll give it a name, okay. References style. And what we want to do, make sure you change to do this appropriate. Ah, but it says it already exists. Yes, I know that. Okay. So we will cancel that because we already have it. Now, in the same way as it doesn't matter what style you use, if you change the style, everything in the paper gets changed. So if I actually modify this, a lot of journals want your references to be hanging by a certain amount. Okay, so if I change that, all of the references now are references style. Okay. Let's just do a quick little test. I am going to change normal to red. Okay, so everywhere I have normal text, it should be red, and everywhere else, it should be black. Oh dear, what a problem. No problem. The reason these are blue red is because originally they were normal. 
and they're based on normal. So they've inherited some of the unspecified parameters of normal. So what I'm going to do is very quickly go to here and say, no, I want my heading ones specifically to be black. And that will change them all. Specifically, I want my references to be black. And that will change all of them. Heading two, I also want black. Not, not bothered about heading three, oh, I might as well change it to black. Although I'm not using heading three. What about up here? Ah, yes, that's fine. Now, to overcome that, when you define a new format, when you define a new style, create a style. If you specify particularly the colour, then it doesn't inherit the colour from any other style. And also, it's probably a good, um, good idea, style based on, say, well, style's based on nothing. Not based on anything. It's its own style. OK? So, there we have all of the styles that are applicable to the Naresawan University journals. And that's how you use styles. And I always strongly recommend that as soon as you start writing any document, you make sure you have your styles set up. And so here I will change normal Where's normal? Normal, normal, normal. Tend to lose these sometimes. There we are. I'll now change normal back to black and everybody's happy. There you are. That's how you use styles. I recommend it. Make sure you use the styles in the template that has been created for these journals. OK? So there it is. That's the sort of formatting of fonts, paragraphs and styles for these two journals. Learn how to use them. It will benefit you enormously and save you an awful lot of time. So thank you very much for viewing this video. Uh, you can download the PowerPoint slides for further study, but not really. Uh, and now you can go to view the video on using the insert menu of Word. Thank you very much.